Let's talk about nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste, which is a fluoride alternative. Hi everyone, my name is Whitney and I'm a registered dental hygienist and I'm also in grad school working on my doctorate in health science and I read a lot of research studies and I really stay up to date with dental science and what's going on in the world regarding dental public health. So I'm making this video to clarify something that's been causing a lot of arguments on social media. People tend to get really heated on both sides, anti-fluoride versus pro-fluoride. So although I am pro-fluoride, it doesn't mean I'm against nanohydroxyapatite. While fluoride truly is the gold standard for evidence-based dental care. I have a bunch of videos explaining the safety of fluoride. By the way, I'll link everything below. For nanohydroxyapatite, yes, the science is very promising and the toothpaste appears to be great as long as it contains 10% nanohydroxyapatite with true nano-sized particles, not micro-sized particles. Keep that in mind. It's cheaper to make it with micro-sized particles, which don't work the same way, and that's not always revealed in the advertising of the toothpaste tubes. So having said that, at this time, as of current, there are two reasons I still hesitate to recommend nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste over fluoride. Number one, fluoride is better at combating acids in your mouth. It's more effective in acidic environments, which is where cavities develop. So hydroxyapatite from nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste starts to dissolve at a pH of 5.5, whereas fluoroapatite from fluoride toothpaste remains stable until the pH drops to 4.5. This makes fluoride more resistant to decay in highly acidic conditions. And since acidic environments in the mouth are directly linked to cavities, fluoride has an edge here because it's more reliable at fighting decay in those acidic conditions. Number two, nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste lacks regulatory approval. So since there's no regulatory process to verify that nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste tubes contain what they claim, at least in the US, you might be buying a product that doesn't contain the full 10% nanohydroxyapatite. Or it may have incorrect particle shapes, rod versus spheres or incorrect particle sizes, nano versus micro, like we mentioned earlier. So while some brands may be trustworthy, we just can't really know for sure without proper regulations in place. Remember, companies want to sell their toothpaste and without having to submit their products for regulatory approval from a third party, it could be tempting to cut corners to make more money on their products, right? Whereas with fluoride toothpaste, it's regulated, such as by the FDA, which means the contents on the label are guaranteed to be what's inside. This gives me confidence when recommending fluoride to my patients. So although the research on nanohydroxyapatite is promising, without regulatory approval, it's hard for me to feel confident recommending it since we don't know for sure what they say is in the tubes is actually being sold. And yes, I know even with regulatory approval, nothing's perfect. People have concerns with the FDA or the ADA, but at least with these organizations, we have the backing of some kind of institutions, not just the company who wants to sell their product, did their own research studies on their product, right? With nanohydroxyapatite, appetite right now in the US, we're only relying on the company's research, their own research, which again, it's hard to verify. And that's tough for me ethically to trust that without third party approval processes. Again, approval processes and regulatory oversight at least puts more eyes on the product's research and product's ingredients to confirm what the company says it contains. Who am I to verify that? I don't have a lab in my house to pull apart all the ingredients in a tube of toothpaste to confirm what they said is in there is actually in there. That's where regulatory approval and healthcare organizations really come into play. So that's my professional opinion. I hope this helps someone. And one more thing about this all, the cost. We need to talk about the extremely expensive cost. High cost is not a bad thing. It's not always a bad thing because yes, true nano-sized particles with 10% nanohydroxyapatite is expensive to make into toothpaste. And I bring this up because from my experience here on YouTube, the number one concern in the comments of all of my videos is finances. The reason people don't go or can't go to the dentist is because of the cost. So nanohydroxyapatite. For those of you who don't know, it's like $20 to $30 a tube. Yes, there are cheaper ones that exist, but those do not contain the 10%. They even acknowledge it. It's usually like 2% or 3%, or if they don't acknowledge it at all, then you probably know it does not contain the full 10%, especially if it's super cheap. Because yes, it's very expensive to make nanohydroxyapatite into toothpaste. So I'm just being realistic for patients who can't afford nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste, but they are scared to use fluoride because of the misinformation about fluoride. 
that is where I personally get a little heated and upset because that's just so wrong to me that companies have scared people into buying such an extremely expensive, oftentimes unnecessary toothpaste. For those who have the money or just wanna use it and or they refuse fluoride, again, yes, I do see nanohydroxyapatite as the next best option after fluoride. But again, whether you have the money or not, I'm still hesitant to promote it due to the lack of regulatory approval. Without knowing for sure that it's 10% with true nano-sized particles, it's a gamble. Overall, this is a very complex topic. It's nuanced. So thank you for watching if you made it this far without getting angry at me. Conversations regarding fluoride and nanohydroxyapatite tend to get people very angry. But let's remember that we all want the same thing, healthy teeth and healthy bodies. If you remember anything from this video, remember that we all want to be healthy. I want that for my patients and my patients want that for themselves as well. And evidence-based science shows that fluoride toothpaste is effective at maintaining oral health and overall health when used correctly. Same goes for nanohydroxyapatite, but it's just harder to make sure the products meet the right criteria. 10% concentration, nanoparticles, particle shape, etc. The problem right now is the gold rush, where a bunch of companies are jumping on the nanohydroxyapatite trend without doing solid research. They just slap a little bit in and advertise their product without it really being a good product. Yes, I'm sure there's very good ones out there. There's some with both fluoride and nanohydroxyapatite. There, of course, are going to be companies that make good products as well. It's just really hard to know right now which ones are which. And a common argument is Japan uses it and approves it. Yes, that is true, but they have regulatory processes for it and we don't. So if nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste gets regulatory approval in the US and we know which brands are delivering what they claim, I'll be more confident recommending it. I want my patients to feel comfortable and trust what they're using, but I also don't want them to get scammed by buying a fluoride-free nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste that doesn't work. So in conclusion, I'm neutral here. I've got no skin in the game, not sponsored by any company on any side. I don't work for any associations or regulatory approval organizations, nothing. I'm a dental hygienist who works chairside in the op one-on-one -on -one with my patients, and I also happen to make YouTube videos here about dental health. I started making these videos because it was fun, but now I'm seeing lots of misinformation out there scaring people into buying extremely expensive products without the proper education behind what they are buying and how to look for the right products. So hopefully this video helps you navigate this world of dental products a little better. And one more time, without sounding repetitive, I just wanna make it clear that until nanohydroxyapatite gets proper regulation, I'm personally sticking with fluoride. Fluoride is backed by established standards and I trust it works because not only do companies conduct their own research, but it's also verified through health organizations and regulatory processes. Fluoride undergoes all of this, yet it still has its critics. On the other hand, nanohydroxyapatite gets a lot of attention without much scrutiny, even when the research shows that nanohydroxyapatite isn't quite as effective as fluoride in acidic environments. And most importantly, it's not regulated in the US. I'm open to giving nanohydroxyapatite a chance in the future once more regulation is in place, but until then, if a current patient refuses fluoride toothpaste, I'll recommend brands that potentially contain the 10% nanoparticles, but I will also educate them that we can't be certain of their effectiveness without regulatory approval. I'll always make sure to educate my patients about the proven effectiveness of fluoride, but if they still insist on avoiding it, I'll suggest nanohydroxyapatite options they can maybe try. However, I always explain how I can't guarantee the same results with nanohydroxyapatite as I can with fluoride. Thank you for watching. Always talk with your personal dental provider to figure out what's best for your individual mouth, and please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications if you enjoyed this video. And if you want even more teeth talk, you can visit my website, teethtalkgirl.com, where all the dental information is evidence-based. I'll also link all of my fluoride videos below if you wanna learn more, as well as my free oral care guide, because all of this talk of toothpaste, and which one is best? You know, proper brushing techniques are just as, if not more important than the toothpaste you use. So make sure you're in fact using your toothbrush correctly, flossing correctly, doing all the things to maintain your oral health at home. You can check out my free oral care guide to help you with that. And until next time, I'll see you on Instagram at Teeth Talk Girl. Peace, love, and teeth.